Hey folks, this is uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, uh, episode 8. Uh, what was this one called? Um, the second segment was Fortune Cookies, I can't remember the first. Um, oh, Blood Moon Ball, that was the first. So this was definitely an improvement on the previous episode. Um, both of these segments were a lot better. Um, blood, so Blood Moon Ball, uh, was just a solid, fun episode. Um, I really enjoyed the repeated gags with, uh, Tom, uh, and his anger issues. Uh, and I liked that... Pretty subtly, uh, it was, it indicated the way that, you know, his quote-unquote anger issues were really control issues. Uh, it was every time he couldn't control Star or control the events happening. Anytime anything happened other than the way he wanted it to happen, he would get angry. Um, had... You know, just had to be in control of everything all of the time. Mm. Uh, what I didn't like uh, was the whole thing about soul mingling. Uh, I mean, that was fine. The idea that his evil scheme was to uh, get them into a situation where, you, you know, the magical light of the blood moon or whatever would cause, uh, you know, their souls to unite and make them love forever and whatever it was they were saying. Um, that's fine as an evil scheme that they escaped. What I don't like is that they threw Marco and, uh, and Star into it and then had that whole weird thing where they could where they were talking in unison later, um, because I really, really, really don't want there to be any kind of a romantic thing between Star and Marco. Um, I know it is virtually inevitable if the show continues that that will eventually be a thing that happens and is explored, but that doesn't mean I want it to happen. Um, because... Uh, it's like Star says, she need, she doesn't need a hero, she needs a friend. And equally true is, she doesn't need a boyfriend, she needs a friend. I like the friendship between her and Marco, and I don't want to see it turn into yet another teen romance thing. Um... I, I loved the little conversation where she called out Marco uh, for coming after her and for not trusting her to take care of herself. That was great. Um, I really I really liked that. Um, sort of goes in hand with the exploration of like him keeping track of how many times they save each other and her being like, no, we'll just have each other's back in the previous episode. Uh, which was a scene I didn't mention in my vlog, but I did like that scene. Mm, and it's the same thing here. Marco wants to be the hero. He wants to be the one who rescues Star. And, quite frankly, that's not what she needs most of the time. She needs someone who has her back, yeah, but most of the time she's perfectly capable of taking care of herself. And, in his own way, Marco is trying to control her the same way that Tom was. He's trying to make her be the person, you know, the damsel in distress, the person that he wants her to be. But that's not who he is, and I like that she called him out on that. Um, that's about it for my observations on the first episode. Uh, second episode was interesting, because I think this is the first time since very early in the show that an episode has implied any sort of continuity 
Mm, in the sense that this episode ends on an ominous note of things to come. Uh, Toffee is up to something. Uh, there's a hint that Toffee has some kind of uh, desire for revenge from some past thing involving Star or her family. Um, there's all the hints that he can't be trusted. Um, there's the way he just sort of oozes his way into Ludo's organization. Uh, he's clearly marked all over the place as somebody who's going to be coming back um, and who is going to turn on Ludo and is going to be a villain on his own. Mm, maybe we'll get um, a, you know, team up of, like, one of those enemies have to work together to fight the greater threat things um, between, you know, Star and Marco and Ludo against him. Uh, that seems plausible, or he just is setting himself up as a villain in his own right, or we'll get an episode focused on Ludo that is about him having to deal with Toffee. There's any number of combinations of things that could happen, uh, but the point is this is setting up for future events. Mm. Other than that, it's just some silly fun. Um, she's... You know, it it's one of those fairly standard at this point uh, stars naive and she gets herself in trouble by not understanding how things work on Earth. Uh, I enjoyed the gag about the calzone that tells you when you'll die, or how you'll die. Um, I also like that it the one we see tries to prank the guy by telling him he'll choke on a calzone. Um, and I like that they actually mention, like, they don't mention it by name, but they describe the Forer effect. I'm not sure if I'm actually pronouncing that right. I've only ever seen it written down, not said out loud. But that's the effect that causes people to believe in stuff like fortune cookies and horoscopes and Myers-Briggs types and all that nonsense is if you give people a, you know, positive, vague message, they will interpret it as being specifically about them. Um, and it's very easy uh, to take advantage of people's tendency to verificationism uh, over, like, trying to falsify things uh, to get them to fall for that kind of thing. Oftentimes, uh, people will even perpetrate it themselves. They will make the same sorts of vague, positive-ish defini- uh, sorry, not definitions, um, predictions, and believe that they're specific, and thus persuade themselves that they have you know, that they're psychic or whatever. Um, it's one of those, you know, known flaws in human thinking. And something that lots of people fall for in different ways, you know. Um, disturbingly large number of people read horoscopes. Uh, people pay money for Myers-Briggs tests. And even subject, like, employees to Myers-Briggs tests. Um, people go to psychics. I mean, all kinds of stuff where they, you know, fall for it. I and mean, it's just a thing that happens. Um, almost everybody's fallen for it at least once. Uh, so, I like that they actually discussed it a little. That, like, that's how fortune cookies work. Now, I don't think anybody's ever believed in fortune cookies. Uh, especially because... At least my experience is that fortune cookies mostly don't predict the future. Most of the fortune cookies I've gotten uh, give ad vague advice rather than predictions. Uh, but whatever, these are gag cartoon fortune cookies, so they predict the future. 
Um, but still, it led to a neat scheme, a neat sequence. I enjoyed the hug thing. Uh, the monster with the long-term crush on Star, that was an amusing gag. Um, especially the two heads fighting over her. That was cute and funny. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Toffee's clearly setting up for something bigger later on. Um, these were a decently solid couple episodes. So... Short vlog this time, I guess. I'll uh, see you guys next time. Bye.